Hey friends, it's Two Short Hair Matt here. Uh, I slacked off all during spring break and now I need a quick video to put out. Something easy to make. So, uh, I've been meaning to make more of these recommendation videos and this should be the easiest one because I have seen more action movies than you ever will. I love action movies, I love comedy movies, and I love action comedy movies. So, uh, I've got a few here today that I think you might not have seen that I'm gonna recommend to you. Before we begin, though, I'd like to shout out my friend Michael at Slateside. He had me on his Derailed podcast. There's a link to it there. There's probably another in the description. Assuming he's uploaded it, as of recording, he still hasn't. And just like with horror comedy, I thought I'd shout out a couple that I consider to be essential viewing for fans of the genre. So just in case you haven't seen them, please check out Hot Fuzz, Tropic Thunder, Team America, Black Dynamite, Kingsman, Death Race 2000, The Nice Guys, 21 Jump Street, The Crank Movies, the collective works of Quentin Tarantino. And with that, let's dive into what are probably the least obscure movies on this list. I'm going to start with two Stephen Chow films, Kung Fu Hustle and Shaolin Soccer. Both Kung Fu parodies, both very funny, both coming up in popularity, but just in case you haven't seen them, check them out. The first one I'd like to talk about, Shaolin Soccer. I just think the concept is so great. It's about a guy who wants to start a soccer team, and he gets together with a bunch of his old brothers who are all Shaolin monks, and they all have these powers you would see in old kung fu movies. Powers you would see in films like The One-Armed Swordsman or Master of the Flying Guillotine, or more recently Iron Monkey and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and it's just basically watching them use these powers to absolutely dominate at soccer. Uh, the other one, Kung Fu Hustle, is more of a straightforward kung fu movie, uh, but with a lot more cartoon inspiration. There are a lot of points in this film they deliberately reference things like the Looney Tunes. Much like Shaolin Soccer, a lot of the characters are absurdly overpowered, and there's just a lot of really funny sequences. Both are very fast-paced, very energetic, very well shot, the only problem I really see with them is that the CG hasn't really held up, but I can forgive that. I'd actually like to see more of Stephen Chow's movies, but not a lot of them have made it to America. But uh, for the time being, these two are absolutely hilarious, and I would highly, highly recommend them. And in a similar vein to both Shaolin Soccer and Kung Fu Hustle, there's another Kung Fu parody I'd like to shout out, Kung Pao Enter the Fist. A lot of people I know in real life have actually seen this movie, but that's probably just because I introduced it to them. I would absolutely understand if you didn't like this movie. It is very, very dumb. However, to me, it is just dumb enough to be a good time. The concept is a bit like What's Up Tiger Lily, where they took a foreign film and dubbed it over, though this one took the time to uh, CG in the main actor who voices all of these characters, and even put in a few new scenes. This was made by Steve Vodekirk, the man behind Jimmy Neutron. Uh, he voices all the characters except one, I think, and he also plays the main hero, the chosen one. It's not an intellectually challenging movie. This is some dumb shit you put on when you have friends over and you laugh your ass off at. It's amazing. The CG also doesn't really hold up in this one. And I just absolutely love it. Moving slowly off the beaten path, let's talk about a real cult classic, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. Much less of a farce, much more subtle in its humor. The film was not very popular when it came out, though it is incredibly popular with everyone who's seen it. The film stars Peter Wellers from one of the greatest action comedies, Robocop as well as John Lithgow as the villain. And man, John Lithgow is so good in this movie, and just in everything he does. Let's just, let's just take a moment and appreciate John Lithgow. What a great actor. God, I hope some scoundrel does not come out about him while I'm editing this. Film follows Buckaroo Banzai, a scientist who leads a jazz band of other scientists. Uh, who discover a way to travel across parallel dimensions 
and accidentally bring back an alien with them. And throughout the film, John Lithgow's character is hunting them down. He was a former member of their team. Uh, However, one of the experiments went wrong, and now he's possessed by one of these aliens and trying to make his way back to the eighth dimension. It's fun. It's cheesy as hell. There's some great performances in it. Jeff Goldblum is dressed like a cowboy for most of the movie. How can you go wrong? While we're here, let me shout out the comedic action stylings of Jackie Chan, who's made so many great comedy action movies, it's hard to narrow it down. But personally, my favorite is the Police Story series, particularly Police Story 1 and Police Story 3, a.k.a. Super Cop. It can actually be really hard to get your hands on this whole franchise because the titles got switched when they were brought to America, so they're not all called Police Story anymore. The first two are Police Story, then there's Super Cop and Super Cop 2, which is less of a sequel and more of a spinoff, and then there's Jackie Chan's First Strike. Although honestly, you could skip First Strike, it's not that good. Super Cop 2 is easily the most obscure out of all of these, but it's also the one that features the least Jackie Chan. He appears for, like, one scene and still gets billing on the box. Mostly it's about his partner Jessica Yang, played by Michelle Yeoh. But for our purposes today, the one I want to talk about is Police Story, because it is so good. It's easily one of Jackie Chan's most action-packed movies. It has some of his best stunts. There's so much collateral damage in this movie, it's not even funny. Like, every glass surface in this film gets broken. It becomes a running gag at some point. And beyond that, I've just always appreciated the fact that Jackie Chan, despite being this action hero, has never been shy of embarrassing himself on film. He's not scared at all to play a bumbling, klutzy character, and it brings a lot of comedy to a lot of his films, especially the Police Story franchise. Moving right along, allow me to speak a few words over the Hot Shots series. The first Hot Shots movie was a parody of Top Gun, and I don't remember a lot of it, though I do remember really enjoying it when I was younger. The second one, however, is the more popular of the two, and the one I enjoy a lot more. The second one takes a crack at movies like the Rambo franchise, uh, very specifically Rambo 3. And it's just kind of funny to see 80s action through the lens of this airplane-style movie. In fact, it was directed by one of the guys who directed Airplane. And of course, it's just violent as all hell, often in ways that don't even make sense. There's a sort of infamous shootout scene near the end where it just keeps track of the body count in the bottom corner. And Charlie Sheen's doing all this crazy stuff, like throwing bullets at people. I'm really disappointed this film has sort of faded into obscurity. It seems like there was a point where this was a fairly popular movie. So if you haven't seen Hot Shots Part Due, I highly recommend it. And maybe check out the first one while you're at it. I don't really remember that one, but presumably it was funny. Dialing it back to something a little more subtle, let's talk about the John Cusack film Gross Point Blank. In the film, John Cusack plays a hitman who's under a lot of stress from his job, uh, and he gets recommended by both his therapist and his uh, secretary to go on a vacation, take a break from work. So he goes home to his 10-year high school anniversary. Of course, he's such a workaholic that he ends up taking a job there anyway and has to assassinate his high school sweetheart's father. Of course, he decides not to kill him, and it just escalates into this crazy action movie between him and Dan Aykroyd and a bunch of other hitmen. Uh, A lot of the banter between Cusack and Aykroyd is really funny. Uh, They have a lot of chemistry, and it makes it even funnier that it's happening in these huge, violent shootouts. It's sort of a nice counterpart to the whole hitman does one last job type of movie. And I mean, in the movie, John Cusack hates on the book Ethan Frome, and I fucking hated Ethan Frome, so points for that. Getting yet even more obscure, let's talk about one of Troma's uh, more popular movies? The film I'm talking about, of course, Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, is clearly no Toxic Avenger, but it seems to appear in a lot of Troma's promotional material, 
So maybe this one's a little more well known than some of their deeper cuts, like say Terror Firmer or even Class of Nukem High, really. I love trauma movies, and personally, I think this is one of their most easily digestible films. It's not some violent, gory splatter flick. It's just like a straightforward superhero movie. There are some grosser scenes, but by and large, it's just the story of a cop who gets some powers from a Japanese kabuki man and ends up becoming this superhero in New York. Much like Troma's other movies, it's wacky, it's off the wall, it's unpredictable, and I just really enjoy it. The only thing I've ever disliked about Troma's movies is the amount of gross-out humor, and this one is very tame on that one, as I already mentioned. So, to me, it's just a perfect pick for a Troma movie. And, not to be outdone, one of the most obscure action films I've ever seen, and yet a hilarious one, Why Don't You Play in Hell? It's a Japanese film from 2013. It's about a group of kids who want to be filmmakers. They've started their own filmmaking crew. And it just so happens that this Yakuza boss's wife is about to get out of jail. And he has told her that their daughter is going to be in a movie. So real quick, he finds this film crew and says, Hey, can you guys make a movie where my daughter's the star? And they say, yeah, absolutely. And what ends up happening is they end up just filming this actual fight between two rivaling Yakuza clans. Like, they get the other gang in on this. Both sides know that they're filming a movie <laughs> during this actual bloody fight to the death. And my god, the action scene is so fucking violent. <laughs> It's like Tarantino and Takashi Maike teamed up on this scene. There's so much blood, so much death, so much violence. It's really funny. In fact, the whole film is just really funny, on top of being very well shot. It's maybe not a film for everyone, if you're not that into the violence. Although I do think it goes so over the top that... Even if you have issues with gore, this is too silly to take seriously. I absolutely adore this film. It's one of the funniest action movies I've ever seen, and I'm so disappointed it's as obscure as it is. It is a foreign film, and a fairly recent one, so maybe it's still trying to find its audience. And I hope it does. I would highly recommend this one to you. In fact, I would recommend all of these movies to you. I do have one more action comedy recommendation for you. It's what I consider to be the greatest comedy action satire ever. The one scene from UHF where Weird Al is Rambo. It's just one scene, but it captures so much about 80s action and has so many great jokes. I, I just love it. I know it's just one scene, but you know what? If you haven't seen UHF, watch UHF. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies, in fact. <laughs> and I guess that's all I have for you. Have you seen any of these movies? Did you like them? Do you agree with my recommendations of them? Uh, what are some action comedy movies you'd recommend? Let me know. Check out that podcast I did. And until next time, have a nice day.